When I mention PowerPoint, I'm pretty sure one of the images that come to your mind is an image of some guy somewhere boring everybody to sleep with his very, very boring slides. I know, we've all been there. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use PowerPoint to create really, really awesome animated videos. And even though you're not interested in making animated videos with PowerPoint, you can use some of these techniques to take your next presentations to the next level. Let's say, for example, you're talking about something so boring that nobody wants to hear about, like student loans, for example. Instead of doing something like this, you could start off your presentation with something like this. Meet Ben, chief Hello. surgeon at his hospital. Ben has made it in life and has helped a lot of patients get well and feel better. But his story did not start from here. It all began with him getting a college degree, which was all made possible by Uncle Sam's student loan. Believe it or not, everything you just saw was created entirely using PowerPoint. And I'm gonna be showing you some of these techniques today. I used a lot of this while I was in college to get extra points in some of my presentations. In fact, in one of my classes, I actually got 110% out of 100 because my lecturer thought the presentation was just too good. And I'm gonna be teaching you today how to do the same. Let's start the tutorial right now. So the very first thing we're gonna need to do is to build out our scene. And to do that, we're going to need images that have some kind of transparency in them. So this could be PNG files or even vector files. And I'm gonna be showing you how you can get these files. So if you're more of an advanced user, you can head to sites like freepick.com and search for these vector files. They would come in ESP format most of the times. And then you need a software that can read this. Adobe Illustrator is a great software for this. Uh, but if you're looking for a free alternative, there is also another software which is called Inkscape. It also does a good job at reading these files. I'm gonna put a link in the description to both of these softwares. So if you're interested, you can head down there and download them. Now, if you're less of an advanced user or you're just not comfortable working with vector files, you can still get some of these images from within PowerPoint itself. What you wanna do is go to Insert, then click on Pictures, and then click on Online Pictures. And while you're there, just search for whatever you're looking for and add the word illustration at the end of it. This should give you the cartoon style like images and a number of these would actually have transparency in them. I'll go ahead and select two of these and insert them. And as you can see, uh, the second one right here is an ambulance that has some transparency. I can move that around. You can also do the same by adding the word PNG. And most of the time, this would bring pictures uh, that have some transparency in them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create our very first scene here. In my case, I will be using vector files and Adobe Illustrator. So what I wanna do is first of all, create my background and I'm just gonna click on the background picture that I have right here and click on Control Copy. So I'm gonna head over to PowerPoint and right click with my mouse and click on Format Background and then the option that says Picture or Texture Fill. And then what you wanna do is click on the clipboard so that will paste whatever I have in the clipboard to set that as the background. And if you're not using Adobe Illustrator to do this, you can click on Insert and then click on Online Pictures. And then you can go ahead and just search for an illustrated hospital image and use that for your background. So next, I'll go ahead and copy each of our individual characters by doing Ctrl C and then Ctrl V in PowerPoint. Just paste them within PowerPoint and I'll scale that to fit properly within the scene. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for each and every one of the characters that we have in that scene and scale them properly until they all fit well. So, and remember, if you're not doing this with Illustrator and Vector Files, you can simply just go to Insert on PowerPoint and click on Pictures and then Online Pictures and then just search for pictures of a patient, for example, and just put the word PNG next to it and you can insert that within your scene and follow along with this tutorial. So next, we are getting to the fun part. We're going to start animating our scene and there are three ways I'm going to show you how to do this. The very first is the animation tab that you have right here and it has several kinds of animation that you can use to bring your scene to life. The first is the entrance animation and this sort of just controls when your character comes into the scene. 
Uh, we also have what is called an emphasis, and this doesn't bring the character into the scene, but it adds some movement while the character is already within your scene. Then we also have what is called an exit animation, and this simply uh, takes the character out of the scene with some animation. And then newer versions of PowerPoint also have something that's called a motion path. And this just gives uh, whatever subject you have in the scene some path to move around. So the next type of animations we're going to be using today are transitions and these move from one slide to another and if used creatively you can do some nice effects like the one you see right here. Quite interesting. And then finally we are also going to be using 3D models. These also have some kind of animations attached to them. For example if I use the bird that we have right here and add it to the scene so you're going to see that it's already animated with flapping wings, which we can use to our advantage. All right, let's go ahead and add some animations to our scene. So I'm going to click on this object right here and I'll go to animations so we can add some entrance animations. So again, there's some options already available right here. And if you don't like any of those, you can click on more entrance effects and that will open up a whole lot more options. The key here when you're doing these kinds of animations is to kind of keep things simple. If you put too many animations and keep it busy, it's going to look a little bit kind of shady. So I'm just going to go for something simple like pick in. So they're going to rise from the ground. Look at that. That's quite simple and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same for the second object in the scene. So if you want to see your animations, you click on animations pane right up here and then it shows you all the animations that you have in your scene and you can always click the play button to see what it looks like so far. So for our main subject Ben, we're going to use two types of animation. I've added the float in and then I'm going to do one more thing. I'll go to uh, add animation, click on that and then I'm going to add an emphasis. For example, we could use maybe the theta effect. So that way he comes up and then shakes his head to kind of say hi. So and here is what that looks like. It's looking pretty good so far. So for our final two characters, we're going to use motion paths for them. And you do that by going to add animation and then motion path. And I'm going to be using the left to right motion path so they walk across the screen. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and adjust the path. And to do that, you want to click right here uh, where you see a little green line that adjusts where it starts from. And I'm going to move that to start just right from outside the screen. And then you're going to see a red dot on the other side and this shows where it ends. And I'm going to drag this red dot all the way to the other side to make it so that they end just right almost at the end of the screen. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like right now. So as you can see, they move from the left to right. So they are moving pretty fast and that doesn't look so realistic, but no problem. We're going to fix that real quick. So you want to click on the effect itself, which is the last one we just added. Right click on it and go to timing. And then you're going to see where it has the different durations. So you can select any one of those. And if you don't like what it has there, you can put it in manually. But for now, I'm going to just use uh, the 20 seconds. All right. So that is already looking much, much better. But we're going to fix one more issue. If you notice, they are walking behind the characters who are supposed to be behind them. And that's an easy fix. All you just need to do is right click and say bring to front and voila, that is completely fixed. So uh, sometimes you might want to control the way the animations happen, uh, especially if you're using this for a video. And that's easy to do. What you just want to do is right click next to the animations on the timeline. And instead of on happening on mouse click, just click for it to start with previous or after previous, depending on what you're trying to do. And just go ahead and repeat the same process for all the animations on your timeline to make sure they're starting automatically and not when the mouse is clicked. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and add all the rest of the animations in this scene. And then I will create one more scene and animate all the elements on that one too. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use transitions from one slide to another slide. All right, so for my very first transition effect, I want the doctor character to morph into the next scene. So he's going to sort of transition into the next scene. 
And to do that, I'm going to be using something called the morph effect. So what I want to do is you want to make sure that you have an element that was in the first slide that is also in the second slide. So in my case, it's the doctor character. And then I'm going to go ahead in the second slide and just click for it to morph. So if you notice, it's not doing exactly what I expected to do just yet. That's because I still have an entrance animation on the doctor character. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and press the morph effect one more time. And you can see the way that transitions into the next scene very beautifully. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create the two final scenes that we had from that intro video. And then I will use one of these to show you how to add 3D objects into your scenes. All right, so to do this, what you want to do is go to insert and then click on 3D models right here and click on stock 3D models. So this will give you some of the models that were already created by Microsoft. So I'm going to go ahead and click on animated animals and then we'll select this little bug right here and insert that into the scene. And now you see you have a 3D model and if you click and drag around, you can change the angle and rotate it in 3D space, however you like. And we can add our animations to it like we do any other object. So I'm going to go ahead and do add animation and create a motion path animation. And I'm just going to do a diagonal movement so we'd have it fly across the screen just like that. And drag that to end somewhere outside. And there you go. All right, so finally, I'm just going to go ahead and add some clip add text to our scene to complete the final scene. All right, next, we're going to talk about sound design. This is the icing on the cake when you're doing your videos. It adds that final missing thing that makes your videos exciting. And PowerPoint has a lot of options for this. So to add, say, let's say sound effect when our object comes up to the scene, what you want to do is go ahead and just click on the object. And then you want to right click on your effect panel. And then go to where it says effect options. And then where it says no sound, you can go ahead and just click on that and select. You can select one of these sounds if it applies to what you're trying to do. But in case you wanted to upload a custom sound, you just scroll down to the bottom and click on other sounds. And right here, I have a pop sound that will pop whenever the character plays. And we can always adjust the volume right here to the right. And that's what that sounds like. So I'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the other character. Okay. So when it comes to adding background sound to the scene, you go to insert media and then click on audio. And then we're going to do audio from my computer. And then I have some ambulance ambient noise here that I already downloaded. So I will add that and just get that out of the scene so that this icon doesn't show. And then let's play that to hear what that sounds like. Okay. So that's what that sounds like. Um, if you want to control the volume, this uh, knob to the right, right here, you can just go ahead and just reduce and adjust the volume accordingly. So one thing is you can control when this music stops playing and to do that, you right click on it and say effect options. And then it says it should end, uh, right now I want it to end once we get out of this slide. So it ends after current slide. That is fine. Uh, with the background music, I'll show you how to make it play throughout all the slides. All right, so for our background music, I'm going to do the same thing, insert media and audio from my computer. So I have a background music here that I already downloaded from the internet. So again, I'll get that out of the slide and I will play that for you to hear what that sounds like. All right, so to make it play throughout the video, we right click again and go to effect options. But this time around, instead of asking it to end after current slide, I'll say end after and I'll just count. I have four slides. So end after the fourth slide is when I want the background music to stop playing and PowerPoint will uh, take care of the rest for you. All right. Now let's see what all of this sounds Hello. like. I don't know about you, but this is already looking pretty amazing. I'm sure you can impress a couple of people with a slide like that. Now, finally, let's talk about recording voiceover. If you wanted to do that using PowerPoint, that is quite simple. The first thing I'll advise you to do is go to your very first animation and click to start on mouse click. 
Uh, that's because this helps you with the timing of your recording so it doesn't start when you're not ready. Then the next thing you want to do is go to slideshow and then click on record slideshow and then do record from the beginning. So that's going to open this window right here. You just want to make sure that your mic is not muted right here. And then if uh, just make sure you're selected also the right microphone from the option right here at the bottom. And once you've done all of that, you have to stay still quiet and hit the record button. Meet Ben, chief Hello. surgeon at his hospital. Ben has made it in life and has helped a lot of patients get well and feel better. And once you're done, you just have to hit the stop button to stop the recording. If you feel the need to start over, just click on this little X right here and then click on clear recordings and that will give you the option to start all over again. And once you're done, you just X out of this and you are done with your awesome video. Finally, I'm going to show you how to export this as a video. You click on file and then you click on export and then you want to click on the option that says create video. So if you did this using narration, just want to make sure that you select the use narration. And then once you're done with that, just give it an awesome name and click save. And congratulations, my friends, you have successfully created an awesome PowerPoint animated video. All right, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Hopefully that was somehow helpful to you. If it was, kindly return the favor by simply hitting that like button. And if you know somebody who you think needs to see this, share this link with them. Again, if you'd like to see content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification button. That way you get notified next time I release awesome videos like this one. And by the way, if you have ideas of videos you would like me to create, let me know in the comment section. I go through those and every now and then I'm going to be creating videos based on your request. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.